Hello and welcome back to a Splash of Paint where it's time for a quick and easy exercise to help develop your watercolour techniques. Today, I want to demonstrate what negative painting is. Lots of people ask me what it is. And it's a very useful trick that works extremely well for watercolours. Any medium can do it, but watercolours has a little bit of an edge on it because in watercolours you use the white of the paper a lot. So negative painting is painting in the negative space to make the positive object like this fence and these few little flowers stand forward. So rather than painting the fence and the flowers and the grasses, what we do is we paint in the background, and this is negative painting. So any colour will do for this, but what I want to use is natural grey and a size 6 brush. So I've got a nice dark colour there. I want to drop in some lemon yellow with it because that will make it look a little bit of a greeny grey, which will be good for this background colour. And I want to go in and basically just paint around the white fence. Now, I want to go in and spend a few moments working in the background there. Not going to be too precise, of course. And then we'll come down that side. Now, we all know that watercolour doesn't have to be a precise medium by any means. So it's just nice to try these different techniques, just like this on a piece of paper, just a little practice. And there's times when you'll find this extremely useful. So we've painted the, the top area. It's nice to blend this away. This is called a vignette, which is a soft faded edge. So I've got a damp brush there. And I'm just going to soften this away. And it creates that nice little misty background. There we go. So already you can see how it's creating the impression of this white fence. And of course, I'll carry on doing this little piece just over this side. And the same there as well little corner at the bottom there. Now the colours I'm using aren't necessarily permanent colours, which means it's quite easy to soften these away. Even after a few minutes of putting them down on the paper, they will still allow you to blend them out. Now as we come to this area, we're starting to get a little bit of a grassy effect coming through there, so I'm just leaving areas with one or two little spots showing. Clean brush again, wipe it over tissue. And the blending always makes the difference, so it's well worth putting the time into that. Just give it a bit of a scrub. I always tell people it's just like using pencils and crayons because if you see that I'm holding the brush right on the tip almost and I'm resting on the paper, it makes it a lot easier for blending. so you can see. It's also nice with negative painting because you can use that damp brush to actually reactivate paint and create shadows in the positive space. For example, this fence, I can just use the damp brush just to pull up there. And you can see how it's creating a couple of little shadows and it's almost separating the back post from the foreground posts. Again, I'm going to get a bit more colour back to the grey, lemon, yellow. And then going in, I'm just working pretty loosely at painting in this sort of grassy area. You can almost sort of scribble up and down with your brush at this point and be very loose with the way you put the brush strokes on. You can make it look as though there's some sort of flowers or you know, like a cow parsley or something, just growing up against the, the fence there. And it's all in the negative space. Clean brush, wipe it on tissue. And even though that doesn't necessarily need blending, it still works pretty well just to go in with that brush and just do a little bit of tidying up on some of the edges. And again, using the damp brush, just to add little bits of 
separation, even use the same color again, just to put in a few little cracks and lines and textures and all the wood marks that you'd expect to see. If you want to paint a little knot on it, you put that little spot and you go around the spot. Either, either way, adding the lines up and down. And then, of course, across for the horizontal bars. And hopefully that describes the way that negative painting works. Okay, before we take a quick break, folks, we've just got time to join SAA professional and enthusiastic artist Dee Cowell. And she'll be showing us the difference between art bars and ink tense blocks and revealing how gum arabic is the perfect solution for correcting mistakes. A lot of people ask me what is the difference between ink tense blocks and the art bars. And so I, I thought I'd do a little demonstration to show you what the difference is. I'm working on watercolor paper. And these are the ink tense blocks. And uh, if you just do a few strokes like that, and then use some water and pull them away, the pigment releases immediate. And you've got some very beautiful color. The, the same can be said with the art bars. So a similar product, working with watercolor, put down a few strokes like that, take some water, dilute it, move the paint around, and it looks like an almost identical product. The difference is ink tense is ink, and the art bars are watercolor. And what does that mean? It means basically that when the ink tense is dry, it's very difficult to lift off. It will stain the watercolor paper. But when the watercolor art bar is dry, you can lift it off. And to a degree, you'll get quite a bit of that watercolor off the paper. There is one exception to the rule. And that is something that I discovered recently. And it's working with gum arabic. And many years ago, I bought a bottle of gum arabic and quite frankly, didn't know what to do with it. It is a wetting agent. And so the idea is that you drop a few drops into your water and that increases the, uh, the way that the water, uh, water soluble part of watercolor dissolves. But what I tend to do is just put a few drops on some watercolor paper and then move it around. You can dilute it with your brush and just cover the surface of the watercolor paper first. So this side, I've covered the entire surface of the watercolor paper. Now that it's bone dry, I'm going to use the ink tense on top, like this, and I'm going to dissolve it. And what should happen is that it should be very difficult to remove. But here's the thing, because I've got gum arabic protecting the watercolor paper, to remove it on this side is going to be quite difficult. You're going to get that stain showing. But on this side, you can lift it off right back to the white paper because you've got a layer of gum arabic between the paper and the ink tents. So it really does free you up, working with ink tents, working with inks, even working with watercolor. So particularly for beginners who are a little bit afraid of making mistakes, of course, watercolor can be quite unforgiving. But if you first prepare your surface with gum arabic, you can paint quite freely. And when it's bone dry, just go into it and lift off that troublesome area and it'll go right back to pure white paper. It's a fabulous product to work with. Arabic. Thanks for that useful tip, D. Art bars and ink tense bars are really great for adding drama and vibrancy to your paintings. Why not give them a go? And let us know how you get on. And remember, we're always keen to know how you've got on and see examples of your work. And why not share them on the community section of the SAA website? Visit saa.co.uk for details. Now it's time for our final break, but join us in part four when professional SAA artist Moriens puts the finishing touches to today's Try Your Hand Up project. And I'll be helping solve a few more of your artistic dilemmas. We'll see you very soon. Mm -hmm.